got some brand new visuals that you've just taken pictures of, some of the hottest things out. Explain some of them and introduce them to us. Dan, we can't take much time on these because they are just so explicit. This is a skull and crossbones here, this one called Snow White. I wonder if that isn't promoting uh, demonology. How about this one called Devil Child? A woman who's carrying her baby to offer it to Satan, to actually ascend up to his throne and offer this baby to Satan. Steve, it seems like there's a number of groups lately. Rolling Stone has even said there's been a proliferation of what they call satanic rock or devil rock. And it seems like there's a great fascination on MTV. In fact, did you know the average young person has been watching something like three or four hours a day of MTV? And an alarming study out of the National Coalition Against Television Violence, they say it's the most violent form of television today. Over 18 violent acts per half hour. And who's the biggest viewing audience of MTV? It's children between the ages of 8 and 11. You know, I heard a man re recently talk, Steve, on the Larry King Show, and they were asking him, how can we help our teenagers to get off drugs? This fellow was not a Christian. He said, parents, the first thing you need to do is to call your local cable system operator and tell them, I want MTV taken off the channel in my home. He said, the way it influences drugs and brings this whole satanic thing into the home is just no good for a kid who's trying to walk, walk it straight. People say, you Peter's brothers overinterpret the lyrics so much. You want to know something? You don't even have to guess at the interpretation. You can see it on the videos themselves. How about this next one, Steve? Introduce this one for us. This one is just a woman in her uh, uh, lingerie. I mean, just whatever they can do. Sex sells, and they're going to push it on their albums. I'll only flash these next ones up there very quickly. This one's entitled Killer Twos. Killer Two, because they know sex sells. Steve, one thing that concerns me is the number of the albums and the videos that are showing the abuse and the bondage of women. We were alarmed to find a while ago in Newsweek magazine how that it actually is showing that the feminist groups in America have become alarmed. They're now fighting rock videos because so much of them, so many of them, promote the abuse of women and children. Did you know some of the fastest form, forms, growing forms of pornography today include sex with pregnant women, sex with crippled mm. women, the murder of children, the forced sex of children with animals, and those are the kind of themes that are even getting heavy airplay in our rock videos. How about this next one, Dan? Bondage. This one is by Gravestone. Victim in Chains, is it, it's called. And there you can see a portion of a man and woman actually been chained together to get this, some sort of a rise out of the sexual experience. And Steve, this one by Celtic, which actually is showing demons that are wrapped around partially clad women. You know, perhaps even the innuendo of the sexual involvement between demons and actual people. I just can't believe it. How about this one? This is uh, by Ronnie James Dio. It's what it is, is demons, uh, a demon there who's actually whipping, whipping a, plea, uh, a priest who's trying to get away uh, from that chain. We're concerned that so many types of violence come out on the album covers. Even as you'll see the death and the murder that's brought forth on this one with the axe, you know, with the blood just dripping off of it. This one just sickened me when I saw it in a uh, rock store. It's called Impaler. It's a rock star with blood just coming out of his mouth. Do you think that's going to influence you to live for God? And yet, you know, I saw young people in that store. The store was packed, grabbing albums off those shelves. The worse it is, it seems like the better it sells. Steve, in so many of the different seminars we've done in the last year, I find a real hardcore group of Christian kids growing up in Christian homes, junior high age, that are so into heavy metal music, like the group Wasp. What do you got to say about Wasp? This album cover sickens me also. It just It's called Animal, and I can't use this word on, on television or in this bi video. It's F-U-C-K. That's the name of it. Animal, F-U-C-K, like a, a beast. And it's a saw cutting him in half uh, right in his groin area. Steve, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 29 says something that maybe we better apply right here. We've talked a little bit about the lifestyles, we, lyrics. Now we're looking at some of the graphics. Let's talk about Matthew chapter 5 and verse 29. The Bible says, if your right eye offends you, pluck it out. If your right hand offends you, cut it off and throw it away. The Bible says it's so important. It's just, if something is near and dear to you that's hindering your spiritual life, that causes you to sin, to get rid of it. Now, Dan, the Bible isn't actually talking to us about cutting off our hand or uh, working on, you know, pulling out our eye, sure. but what the Bible is saying is if there's something near and dear to you that you need 
to get rid of, go ahead and get rid of it. But some people say, oh, but I love my rock music so much, I just don't want to give it up. Or maybe it's country. Hey, we could spend some time talking about country music today as well. I mean, it isn't really any better than rock music. Steve, I even had a man come up to me lately and he said, my daughter sat me down and she says, Dad, if you want me to give up my rock, let's spend one hour listening to my rock radio station and one hour listening to your country station and we'll write down all the themes <laughs> in the music. And you know, at the end of the hour, this Christian dad said, Dan, I realized if I was going to preach to my kid about rock, I was going to have to give up my country too. Mm.